Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to store user input in a variable with JavaScript. So this is going to be a quick and easy tutorial for you guys. I'm sure you will get it very easily. Um, but nevertheless, as you guys know, we always provide a written tutorial or a written guide with our video tutorials. So you can pull that up. I leave it in the video description below. And here you can look at the code if I may be moving a little bit too fast and everything is broken down a little bit more than I can do in the video. There is also a button to fork this REPL that I'm working in here. So you can click on that button and you can code along with us or look at the finished code as you wish. All right, let's get started. So I have a plain and simple HTML5 boilerplate code here. I have an index.html file that I have created with the default boilerplate that REPL it provides. And we also have a script.js file and we have a style.css file that just does some basic styling here. And I have nothing really in there. Uh, that's basically irrelevant. Um, and then we have the script JS file imported in our HTML. So it's at the bottom of the body tag. So you need to import it there. I'm just going to close the header here because we don't need to look at it. It's just some additional code uh, that's clogging up the screen. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just add some h1 here and I'm going to stick with the written tutorial here so we can uh, go along with it in a variable. And then I'm also going to add a little p tag here with an instruction to enter some text. Let's do a colon in here. Okay. And uh, then we're going to save and we're going to look at it. So you can save that with control S on REPL it and then it refreshes the browser and shows what we actually created. So this is what we just uh, set up here. And then we want to go ahead and we want to create an input field that we are going to utilize to store our text in a variable in uh, with JavaScript. So we do a input and we give this input an ID and this ID is going to be user input with camel case. And then we set it to type equals text. And we also give it a placeholder. We call that placeholder and we say it's enter text. Maybe we can put it up like this. And then we put a closing tag at the end like this. Okay. And we hit control save and we have our text field popping up here. All right, the next step is we need to somehow submit this form. And the way we do it, we do it with a button. So we create a button and we put an on click listener on this button. If you don't know what that is, uh, I will leave a link to a guide on on click listeners in uh, the description below and you can check that out. So we do on click and then we set it equal to a function uh, that we haven't created yet, but we are going to create in a second. So this is just a placeholder name at this moment. So we do return text. And this is the function we are going to create momentarily. And then we need to close that and we say submit and we need to close the button tag here. And once we hit control S, then the button shows up. Now, obviously, if you enter something now, nothing's going to happen because this function doesn't exist yet. And that's what we're going to create next. So we go to our script.js file where we will create this function. So we call it exactly as it is in our tag. So we do return text and then we open our curly braces and then we set or initiate a input variable and we say let input. That's where we're going to store our input in the variable. So this is the variable we're going to store it in. So we say let input document and then we do get element by ID. There it is. And then if you remember right, we set that up to be user input. And then we need the value of user input. Again, if you don't know about uh, element tags and document get element by ID, it's really easy to uh, look that up. And then uh, we're just going to output that in an alert and we output the input variable where we're going to store our stuff in. Then we hit control S to save. And then we can go ahead and test if it's actually working. So I go back to our index HTML and quickly walk you through what we just did. So we created some placeholder text here. Then we created a input field with the ID of user input. And uh, we have a type, this is text and we have a placeholder enter text, which is this here. This is the grayed out text there. Then we have created a button with an on click listener where we want to execute the return text function as soon as we press submit. And as soon as we press submit, basically our browser or 
our application sends us to our JavaScript file, which will execute this function. And then it will basically initiate the input variable where it's searching for this field, this ID, uh, with the ID of user input, which is this field right here. So this text field. And if we enter something here, hello world or whatever, then we want to get the value what is inside of this field. And then we want to put it out with an alert. So if we press on the submit button now, or if we click on the submit button, we should get an alert with the message of hello world. There it is. And um, yeah, that's about it. That's how you store uh, user input in a variable using JavaScript. Of course, this is more or less for testing if you really want to store something in a variable and use that later on, unless you just directly execute a function. You're probably going to use a database or something like this or you use an API to do that. But this is the simplest way. And I found that that helps a lot of people to wrap their head around how is data handled in the browser when we use JavaScript files and make stuff interactive, how to call functions. This is a really nice example and an easy example of how to do that. Now, if you want to dive deeper into JavaScript, of course, check out our YouTube channel or our Humix page and you can click on learn over here if you go to seosec.com and if you click on JavaScript, we have an entire section of beginner friendly tutorials on JavaScript and each of those tutorials has a video attached to it. So every one of our courses are fully interactive with Repelit repository, with a video and with an article to follow along and we are just in the process of creating a complete beginner section that takes you step by step through learning javascript and web development if you like that video guys make sure to subscribe to humix or and youtube if you want to and make sure to check back for the next video thank you very much for watching guys i hope you enjoyed it